I think today's video is going to be pretty exciting. It's been a while since we have tried out these full stack AI agents. So uh, I really want to build an app. I'm going to show you soon what the app is going to be. But we are here on data button. They have kind of upgraded their latest AI agent. So we're going to try it out today. We're just going to start here. Click new app. Of course, you can see we need to describe this. So we need a prompt. I have prepared my prompt for this. So I'm just going to go through simply what I want to build today. Uh, I'm going to be using my standard XML tag prompting here. So I want an app that can compare LLM API prices from different providers and models. I have some functionality. I want to punch in name, model name, uh, live bench coding score, price per million tokens, etc. I want the stories in a Superbase DB. Uh, I want some graph visuals so I can kind of compare them on a graph. I think that's going to be pretty cool. I also want to be able to compare two models to see a side by side comparison. And the design is just going to be a dark black team with matrix green and purple highlights. So I'm going to grab my prompt here. I'm going to head back to data button, just paste it in here. But this is the way I prompt. You don't have to do it this uh, complex if you want to continue. Okay, here we get to something requirements. Do you have something you have already worked on? Uh, here I kind of have to give them some feedback. This is a sponsored segment, uh, this video. Uh, so I gave them some feedback here that they might want to add like a skip button here because I don't have anything. So this is a bit confusing, but I'm just going to continue for now. And uh, then we get to do you have any design inspiration? I do. So I'm going to bring up my web page. So this is just a screenshot of my website. I like this style. So I'm going to try to keep that. Uh, I'm just going to upload this file so we can just drop this here. Okay, that was done. Pretty simple to kind of get your design nailed down. I know I said in like the description uh, on the design here that we want a dark uh, black team. So I think I'm just going to remove this and just keep it dark black team. And hopefully, or maybe we can just do follow the uploaded image or something like this. That should be fine. Okay, we have our file. Now we're going to go to integrations. And like I said, I want a super base database to store the LLM values. And then we can just press let's start. And what is pretty cool about data button is that it's like a full stack AI engineer. So it's going to do most of the building fully autonomous. Uh, I did like a demo of this like before I went on to record this and I was pretty happy. I think they are doing a lot of things right. And I'm going to show you some of that in this video. So uh, this is just going to work in the background now. And let's go back when this kind of have started here. Okay, so that was pretty quick. Uh, you can see here we get these eight different to do tasks. So we can read through this. So we have like a step by step plan, right? How we're going to build our web app. We can call it that, right? So I should just start uh, with uh, LLM one. That is the first task to create the landing page. Uh, what do you think about this? Yes, let's do it. So now you can see kind of the agent uh, from data button here is uh, yeah, doing like a step by step plan. Uh, and it's going to grab, of course, the to do list we have here. The first step is going to be to create a retro future listing landing page. And we're just going to build that using probably components and uh, TypeScript, I think. So, uh, yeah, you can see, let's just let the agent run here and we can look at the preview when this is done. Okay, so we were done here. So here we can see it asked me, the only thing missing is the press 2 p font for the pixel art typography. Would you like me to add that? So I'm just going to do yes, uh, try that. But if you look at the preview, I think this is kind of lacking some... Uh, white because uh, if I when I uploaded this uh, it was a bit more white in this so I'm just gonna add add some more white highlights to the landing page too let's try that and I'll be right back when the agent has kind of run through this and updated my code okay so we had added the font we have done some changes if you look at the preview now yeah this looks much better uh, I guess this was a bit strange, but I think we can update this later. So for now, I'm kind of happy with my landing page. I like the font. I like the style. So now we can go back to uh, this. I can just go to the next step here now. So that's going to be LLM2 and click start task, right? Uh, but I also can go here and mark this as done. Uh, okay, I guess we have to wait for that. So let's complete task two. 
and then we can mark task one as done i think so for task two here we're just gonna set up our super base database we probably have to enter our keys and urls and that should be pretty much it i think okay so we kind of have the code for the super base uh, db now the only thing we have to do now we need to grab this uh, sql code here that the agent present to us uh, because we need to create this so we can just go to superbase sql editor paste this in and click run perfect so that was a success if we now go to our table editor you can see we have a db hill called providers and we have a db hill called model so this is the model name right perfect so that looks pretty good there's one more thing we have to do we have to give the agent our api settings to be able to connect to our database so i'm just going to go to project settings and data api i'm just going to grab this url and my key and feed that to the agent and then we can kind of continue okay that was done you can see it try to add some sample data here so let's uh, if we look at our database here perfect we have added some sample data that worked good i guess we can just delete this now because we don't need those we want to add our own data later uh, but that means we are finished with step two that's great so I'm just going to go mark step one as done now. Right, that's good. And I'm going to mark step two as done. Great. And now we can move on to our step three. That is going to create the model input form so we can add to our database. So we're just going to start this task. And this is what I think is pretty cool about this uh, full stack uh, kind of autonomous AI agents, if you want to call it that. Uh, is that while this is working in the background, I can edit my video as you're watching here <laughs> and there's a bunch of other stuff you can do while this is just running in the background and I can head over to cursor right I can do multiple things at the same time so this is something I have been enjoying while playing around with data button for the last few days so let's try to add some data here now so you can see we have our add model page I think we can open this in a bigger window here so uh, let's try to add some data here. So let's do OpenAI. Let's do O3 Mini. Uh, I think the input price is something like 1.10 and the output price is 455. Uh, I wanted to catch the live bench score here. So you can see O3 Mini High has the coding average of 82.7. So if we go back here now and put in 82.7, we can add this. Okay. So let's check our database. Yes, we got it. So you can see here is our data. You can see page not found. This is because we haven't created this page yet, but that is going to be one of the next step. So that worked out pretty good. So my plan now is just to continue here. We can click on... Uh, this mark as done, yes. So uh, I'm gonna speed through the rest of the steps. So we're gonna implement uh, a graph, side by side comparison, model listing, add some data management and updates maybe, implement some uh, last navigation and layout errors, not errors, <laughs> fixes. So I'm gonna speed through this last five steps here. You would just probably see like a, yeah, compilation of those while the agent runs in the background. And we're going to take a look at the final web app we're going to build now in just, yeah, uh, 30 minutes max. And that was about it. Now you can see all our steps are green and done. We can look at our preview and boom. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Uh, I have tested it. And uh, yeah, I gotta say I'm pretty impressed. If we go to models, you can see we have added our DeepSeq model. I guess we can open this uh, in a bigger window here. So yeah, this is kind of the landing page. We can go to models. Here we have our DeepSeq R1. We have our prices. We can compare them. We can click on a graph. Here we can see where the models are plotted on this graph, right? And we can click on compare here. Here we can pick models. So let's do O3 mini. Let's compare it with DeepSeq R1. And you can see we have the cost effectiveness. This is probably just the combined price divided by the live bench score. So here we have 14.6% uh, live bench points per dollar, I guess. 
and DeepSeek R1 are 24 points per dollar. So uh, this is cheaper, but of course the library score is a bit lower. So I would say maybe the cost effectiveness uh, compared to intelligence is maybe what we should have plotted here on our graph. Uh, that is pretty interesting and we might change that. But other than that, I'm pretty happy. I kind of like how this looks. We have this kind of my style as I wanted to. We can click down here, add model. We can add more models to our page. So let's do like, uh, so let's add Anthropic. We could do Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Uh, the input price, this is a, quite an expensive model. So it's $3, right? So we could do, not there, but uh, 3.0 and output is 15. Crazy. That is expensive, uh, not that, but 15.0. Live bench score on this model is 67.1, um, 67.1. So let's add that. Okay, that was done. Okay, so you can see we have Claude Sonnet here now. So you can see points per dollar, 3.7. That's a big difference. So we can compare Claude here. Uh, let's compare it to O3, so you can see points uh, effectiveness. Ooh, that's a low score compared to the price, right? So in most cases, we should maybe pick O3 Mini if we want want most cost effectiveness, right? Uh, this is something I'm gonna keep working on. I think it's pretty cool to add up this, but of course, it's not super precise. But I think it just showed uh, how easy it was to build uh, a fast app that I want to use myself using data button and it was a breeze, right? Because uh, I just started the task and I checked in, I changed some stuff. So I can also go in here now and edit the code. Uh, I think there's an option you can export the code so you can continue working in cursor. Uh, you can do this offline, right? And uh, what I didn't show was this settings. So here you can see your secrets. Superbase URL, Superbase key, so you can have control over that. You can add your other API keys. We have some control over the design here. We have extensions. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, things you can do afterwards, like a custom domain. So I think the next thing we want to do now is go back to our plan and click on the deploy button here. So when we click on deploy here, you have set a public account wide username to do that. So I'm just going to pick a username. So let's do... A, 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 Chris, or something like this. Confirm this. Okay, so I set my name. I'm gonna click deploy. I'm gonna call it LLM Bench. That's fine. Okay, LLM Bench 2, deploy. And let's just let this run and see if we can get this live now. Okay, so let's just open our incognito windows, paste in this, and boom, we got it. How cool is that, right? So that kind of takes away how hard it is to deploy an app. So if you go to models now, you can see we are loading up our models here. Perfect. So this kind of takes away some of the hassle it is to deploy something. And for non-technical people, this could be very hard, like deploying on Vercel. There's a lot of stuff you got to set up. Firebase, even those uh, frameworks are kind of still quite hard to work around if you want to deploy something. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description for this. Uh, you can probably just add some models here if you wanna try this out. You can start, uh, yeah, comparing models. And this app is something I'm gonna keep updating so I can just have some control of where the API prices are going. So I'm super happy with this. I'm gonna keep continue using like data button here to create some of my front end project. I think that's just super easy. And today I just showcased like a small set of things you can do with this full stack AI agents. There's just a bunch of more things you can do like a data button here for example can run Python code. So I'm gonna keep exploring this. We're probably gonna be back with another video in the future where I will explore some more advanced stuff using data button. But super cool software, super cool product. And I think if you go down in the description now, there's gonna be a link where you can start trying this out. At a discount, you will get some extra credits. So definitely go check them out. Super cool product. And these full stack AI agent, AI engineers are just here to stay, I think. And they're kind of changing the way we are working with our web apps. 
software as uh, you can call it like think about it like uh, software for your own use or like uh, what you call it uh, something like uh, not throwaway almost like throwaway software you can spin up like a quick app for just a simple thing and I think that's super cool so I like me and my friends we have created this uh, fantasy football app that we use like internally uh, there's no monetization we just play on it together and it's working super well and yeah it's so fun playing around with these tools i'll see far how see how far they have come already so click the link in the description check them out super cool product so yeah thank you for tuning in hope you learned something hope you wanted to try out to build your own stuff here and i'll see you again very soon